Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and today I'm trying out a brand new product that I saw being used I believe by Carolyn Duby on her YouTube channel and it's called Easy Marble by Marabou and it's marbleizing paint and I think the whole idea of this is you float the paint uh, on top of water and you can marbleize paper and according to this you can also mar marbleize uh, non-porous items as well. So I've assembled some things together uh, for what I will need to do this. I have this kit that I bought and it comes with six colors blue, red, yellow, white, green and black. I have a tray that I'm going to put water into. I have some stir sticks. I've got some plastic gloves uh, protective gloves because I'm really not sure whether or not this will stain my hands so I'm not going to take a chance. I'm also wearing a uh, craft apron as well to protect my clothing. I've got uh, different substrates here that I'm going to try on. I've got some ordinary white cardstock. I've got some Tim Holtz distress uh, cardstock, watercolor uh, distress stock. I have this butterfly that I cut out of some chipboard at one point in time and I've got some just ordinary from Staples shipping labels and to try it on a non-porous surface because they talk about pu pushing something right down into the water and pulling up and the color will cling to it I have this empty little spray bottle uh, acrylic spray bottle so we'll see what happens with that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get water in my tray I'm going to get my gloves on get myself organized here and we'll see how this works. Now it did come with an instruction booklet in various languages but there really aren't that many steps to doing this. Uh, it tells you what you're going to need and it says objects for dipping like eggs or polystyrene hearts. Uh, you'll need some wooden skewers. I'm using these extra long coffee stir sticks. It says to fill the container with plenty of cold water it's got to be deep enough for the object to be completely immersed. Okay, I may have to, when it comes to using this bottle, I may have to go to something a little deeper, but we'll see. Drip several drops of the first color directly onto the water surface. Drip a few drops of the next color into the middle, one after another. A film of paint develops. Two or three colors are ideal. Then you swirl the paint using a cocktail stick to create a marbled pattern in the paint on the surface of the water. It says, work quickly uh, from dripping to dipping. Next, dip the object slowly through the layer of paint into the water. The paint film on the water surface will wrap itself around the object and quickly pull it out vertically upwards. Hmm. Okay. Tip, before pulling it out, blow the remaining paint to the edges of the container. This prevents colors from overlapping when pulling the object out. And the dipped object is ready once dry. Before dipping the next object, clean the water surface completely. The old excess paint can be removed from the surface of the water very easily using a piece of paper. Okay. So that's all the instructions we have. So let's give this a shot. So let's pick three colors. Let's go with the blue, the yellow, let's go, and the red. Okay, let's do our primaries. So let's start. I don't know if I should start with the darkest and go to the lightest. Yeah, doesn't matter. Okay. Um, should I shake this up? Let's see. What's it say on the bottle? Done say. I guess I will shake them all beforehand. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's got a little Okay, that's spread across the water surface says to drop in the center all right it's got a bit of a smell to it I don't recommend breathing in the fumes okay so then it said to swirl it a little bit So basically, it's like a film. It's like an oil. Ooh, okay. You don't do that for too long because this stuff comes off. Hmm, that's different from things I've used before. Okay, let's take some ordinary cardstock. 
and just lay it on the top. And what do we have? Whoa, that's pretty good. I got some negative space, but but it's like a plastic. It's not like other ones that I have used. You can actually see it. it looks like a a film. Okay, let's try a tag now. It said I don't know how many dips you'll get out of this. So actually, let's just submerge it. See what happens. Maybe I'll get a double-sided piece. Well, didn't, oh, oops. Okay, that could be disastrous. Yes. Okay, so not as bright as the first one, but that's to be expected. Okay, let's see if we can do this a little better. Um, said to push it off to the side sort of a thing. It will cling. It, it's colorizing my stir stick. It's like, a, like there's a light film of a clingy plastic on top of the water, which is very different from any product I've used before that marbles paper. Let's see how these dries. I'm just going to move them over here a little bit out of my way. That one I got pretty soaked. Okay, let's, uh, what color is this? I'm really not sure how much of this I should use. We're going to try four colors this time. And we're just going to go. Let's try the watercolor paper this time, the Tim Holtz. It's a little thicker. Ooh, that's nice. I still have some negative space though there, so I got to make sure that I push it down in a little bit more. Let's try tag. It's pretty good too. Okay, so let's move these out of workspace here. Let's move this one over here. Move that one up there. Okay, let's see if we can get one where it's totally co covered in color. Or actually, I wonder if I add just a little bit more. Well, let's be daring and try the black. Oh, that was green. Sorry, it's not black. Try the white. Yeah, try the black too. What the heck? I'm going to take this one that I did at first. This is on the cardstock, and I've got these white spots. Let's see if I can get rid of the white spots. I was able to add another layer on top of it, but I didn't get rid of the white spots. That may be something we'll just have to live with. Okay. Let's just clean the water, move things over to the side. Now, I want to try that little butterfly. I'm going to add just a lot more. It's going to get more intense color.
So far, I'm not getting mud, which is good, but I probably would if I was to really wickedly stir this up. I'm just going to be very gentle. See if I can make sort of a design. This is the kind of thing you can do in the regular marbleizing products that I've used before. It's almost like you're you're stretching out a piece of plastic, which is very different from the kind of thing I have used before. Okay. Let's take the butterfly. Now this is a piece of thick chipboard. Whoa, that is very pretty. I'm gonna see if I can do both sides. Yeah, okay, so putting more in helps. Oh yeah, both sides. But I got this gooey. There's a gooey right there. See that? Get it off. But... Okay, that's pretty pretty good. Let's uh let's swirl what's in here just a little bit more. Oops. See, it seems to solidify. That's why they say to work fastly. Look, see, I got this goo on the stick. I don't know if I like that. Put that over there. Okay. Um, let's take another piece of the watercolor cardstock from Tim Holtz. Let's put it right in. See what happens. Oh, not bad at all. Again. Missing some spots, but the effect's kind of interesting. All right, let's just swirl this around. Now, this is not very deep, but I'm going to try it on the plastic bottle anyway, since I'm kind of cleaning up some of this stuff in here because it's kind of clinging to my stick. Okay, let's go all out here. Let's start with black. And then a little white, blue, red, yellow, and green. Take our stick. And let's take our bottle and look at that. See if I can grab a little bit more color in some spots. Now, a deeper container would help. Okay, but that's pretty cool. Now, we'll see what happens once all this stuff is dry. All right, so. This is kind of a cool product. Let's see, I've got a tag over here. I got a little bit of stuff left, so it said clean it up. So let's just try swirling it in the water. If there's anything left, sort of left drawer, but even that's kind of cool. Okay, now I've got it on my, I wonder how well this stuff washes up. Okay, I'm going to clean up and I'll be back in a moment. 
Okay, so I want to show you clean up here because um, I have some of this on my hands. After I took off my gloves, I was sort of trying to dry all of these. Um, there always seems to be more water coming up on it. So it almost makes me think that maybe this stuff is a type of plastic and it traps water underneath it. But you can blot that off and I don't know how long it's going to take to dry. This bottle still feels a little tacky. Um, and the butterfly is still damp because it's chip chipboard but those are off to the side drawing and what i'm going to try to do now is clean this mess up now if i just take a paper towel and spritz it with a little water let's see what will happen now these are non-stick craft mats and the water really isn't getting it okay Let's try a little hand sanitizer because hand sanitizer has alcohol in it, rubbing alcohol in it. Well, that works a little better in the water, but you got to give it a bit of a scrub. Yeah, it will come off though. Now, my recommendation is that you put down some paper, some newsprint or scrap paper or something underneath your, on your work surface. Um, then you can just roll it up and throw it away. You don't have to worry about doing what I'm doing right now, which is trying to clean off my craft mat. Now that's with hand sanitizer. So why don't we just try straight up rubbing alcohol and see what happens. And I'm out of rubbing alcohol. Okay, just a second. I'll be okay, right. so I filled up my little spray bottle with rubbing alcohol. Now this is 99% rubbing alcohol. Um, the reason I have that is because you can buy it by the case at Costco. So you probably want a fairly strong alcohol. I'm just going to let that sit for a second while I get a paper towel. Oh, straight up rubbing alcohol does it. This is better than the hand sanitizer. Well, of course, this is 99%, I told you. So, yeah, that cleans up pretty good. But I would still put down some uh, scrap paper underneath your work surface so you don't have to do this. You can just roll up the paper, throw it out. Okay, and I'm just going to clean this up a little bit more and be ready. Okay, back. so my craft mat's all cleaned up, so the rubbing alcohol seems to work the best with that. These are pretty much dry. I did take a heat gun to them. Um, they absorb some of the water, though, of course, so they're still a little bit on the dampish side. So I would say, before you do anything more with them, let these sit out and air dry, you know, probably a good hour or whatever. Um, the bottle is pretty much dry, and it I thought it was going to feel tacky, but actually it doesn't. You know, the squirter still, sprayer still works, but this is just a cast off anyways. I won't. I think next time I would put it, the water in a deeper container so that I could just simply lower this right straight down, pull it right up. I think the effect would be much better than trying to roll it because I kind of mixed up my colors with that. And the butterfly, he's not bad. He's still a little damp too. I think, though, it's it's not very shiny. That's the effect of the chipboard. I think I would just go over this with something like glass, glossy accents or a um, a, a shiny gloss uh, matte medium or something like that just to give it a little bit of shine. So overall, this product, Easy Marble by Marabou, isn't bad at all. But some recommendations. Wear gloves. Now, I got a little bit of it on my hands, and I got most of it off. Actually, it's almost kind of peels off. Um, I used a little bit of a scrub brush to get off what I had in my fingers, but I would definitely use uh, disposable gloves with this. I would cover my area with newsprint or scrap paper. That would just make cleanup easier. And um, have everything ready to go that you're going to dip into this because it does um, start to almost solidify, um, gets real gooey, very quickly in the water. So have a, have your stuff close to you. Don't let it just sit there for a while because I think you'll come back and it'll just be a globby mess. Um, is this stuff toxic? Yeah, you're not supposed to eat it. You're not supposed to get it in your eyes. You're not supposed to breathe in it. 
okay? Although there are some fumes, I didn't find them horrible uh, with it. Um, so I'm pretty sure you could use it in a, in a well-ventilated room with no problem. Uh, again, though, uh, I don't think you should get it on your skin. And I don't think, and be very careful about splashing or anything like that. Still got some on my hand here. Try to rub it off. Okay. Um, and don't eat it. That's probably a good thing on most products. Don't eat it. All right. So overall, it's a very interesting product. It works very differently from other marbling products that I have used in the past. And uh, it wasn't all that expensive. Um, it cost me about $25, $26 uh, before tax Canadian. Um, and I, I don't know where you can buy it. I ordered it through my local scrapbooking store. It was a special order. Um, so I'm not sure if you can get it on Amazon. You might be able to go directly to the company itself, Marabu, M-A-R-A-B-U, and see if you can pick it up there. Um, anyways, overall, if I was to give it a rating out of 10, I'd give it about an eight, uh, for that. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a while since I've made one like this and uh, we'll move on with other videos in the near future. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.